depression in freezing point or uh, the study known as the cryoscopy so first of all what is the freezing point uh, freezing point of a solution is the temperature at which solution is in equilibrium with the solid solvent so the uh, temperature at which uh, solution is in equilibrium with the uh, solid solvent and at uh, this temperature the known as freezing point uh, two phases are uh, coexisting and uh, at uh, higher temperature the solution will be in liquid state and at lower temperature solution will found in solid state moreover uh, the freezing point of the solution is always less than the freezing point of its pure solvent so uh, here t is the temperature at freezing point this is due to the lowering of vapor pressure of the solution as compared to the pure solvent so in order to have a thorough understanding uh, let's uh, plot a graph between temperature on x-axis and vapor pressure on y-axis and the curve uh, this curve is uh, represented as b c is for the pure uh, liquid solvent when the temperature of the solution uh, pure solvent is decreased the vapor pressure is also decreasing so at point b the liquid and the solid states are in equilibrium so this point B is known as the temperature at freezing point so here T naught is the freezing point of the pure solvent corresponding to the point B so if the solvent is cooled further at lower temperature uh, as compared to the, its freezing point then change of vapor pressure uh, with temperature is given by the curve AB. So here we can see that the rate of change of uh, the vapor pressure uh, with respect to temperature is very sharp for the solid solvent as compared to the liquid solvent. So here uh, the this curve uh, represents the whole range of the liquid at uh, different temperature uh, showing the vapor pressure whereas the, the curve AB is representing the uh, solid state and the gas uh, state so the vapor pressure of the solid solvent uh, will be known as the sublimation curve because the uh, solvent vapors are generated directly from the solid state of the solvent so uh, this curve is uh, known as sublimation curve so again at uh, the freezing point of the pure solvent that is T naught the solid and the liquid phases are in equilibrium and the solvent in the both phases have same vapor pressure at the point B above the temperature at point B the solvent will exist in a form of liquid but at lower temperature the this solvent will exist in a form of solid so now what happened if we dissolve the solute so when a solute is dissolved in uh, in the solvent to form a dilute solution the vapor pressure become less than the uh, pure solvent so here we can see th uh, the curve uh, ef is representing the uh, variation of temperature with respect to vapor pressure of the solution that is in liquid phase so uh, to find the new state of equilibrium between the uh, solution and the pure solid solvent 
here we have the curve for the pure solid solvent and this one is the, for the solution for the freezing point of solution the temperature must be in equilibrium between the solution and the pure solid solvent and the temperature uh, must be known at which the vapor pressure of the solution become equal to the solid solvent at this point F the temperature corresponding to point F is the freezing point of the solution here uh, uh, while the solution is freezing it is assumed that the only pure state of the solute and solvent are separate out at uh, the lower temperature so here uh, we uh, will show the uh, curve for the uh, sublimation curve for the solution is uh, represented as AF that is because the uh, so solution isn't freezing as it is but the solvent and solute are separated as pure state so the this curve is representing for uh, the solvent that is actually the pure solvent that uh, separates out in other words uh, solute does not dissolve in the solid solvent like for example if we want to dissolve the solute like uh, we are taking the sugar which cannot be dissolved into the ice so uh, as uh, the solute is affecting the uh, liquid phase curve for the solution and uh, it is not altering the solid curve for the pure solvent so in simple words solute does not dissolve in the solid solvent uh, and has no effect on the vapor pressure of the solution so we get the same graph as represented by the pure solvent that is AF. So now we have observed uh, two points that is B and F. B is representing the freezing point of the pure solvent whereas F is representing the freezing point of the dilute solution. Here one thing uh, is uh, to be uh, mention here that uh, the uh, this red line is showing uh, the assumed extrapolation of the curve uh, this bc for the pure solvent that is decreasing the temperature uh, while the corresponding vapor pressure of the pure solvent is also decreasing uh, must follow the trend line followed by the pure solvent in liquid state but it uh, is not practically observed uh, because the uh, at uh, solid phase the solvent have higher intermolecular forces as compared to the pure solvent which um, make the solvent particles to bound firmly and uh, the intermolecular bonds are so strong that the free solvent molecules at the surface of the solid solvent are decreasing sharply now let's discuss that how the uh, depression in freezing point that is uh, represented as this difference is related to the um, concentration of the uh, dilute solution uh, which does uh, depict that the depression in freezing point is actually a colligative property which means that it depends on the concentration of the uh, uh, solute or, or the quantity of the solute present in the dilute solution 
So now let's uh, take the help of Clausius uh, Clapeyron equation, uh, which relates the vapor pressure of the uh, liquids with the temperature of the liquids. So here uh, we have uh, P S, which represent vapor pressure of pure liquid and solid solvent at freezing point of pure solvent so here we have the point B in the figure so here we have the P at PS whereas P naught is the vapor pressure of pure super cooled liquid at the freezing point of the dilute solution here so this point is representing the vapor pressure of the pure super cooled liquid so this line is also representing the uh, curve for the pure solvent liquid but at very low temperature so it is the curve representing the uh, vapor pressure curve for the super cooled solvent liquid in later discussion we will also use another uh, pressure which is uh, represented as p which is actually the vapor pressure of solid solvent and solution at freezing point of solution so uh, from the graph this point P is the vapor pressure of the solid solvent and the solution at TFS so in order to apply the Clausius uh, Clapeyron equation uh, we have uh, the following uh, equation for the uh, thermodynamic treatment of uh, this diagram showing the transitions between the uh, uh, phases like for pure uh, solvent and the uh, uh, pure solvent that is in liquid and uh, solid for uh, pure solvent uh, normal uh, liquid state and the super cool state whereas uh, this one is showing the solution in liquid phase curve in this equation del hv is the heat of vaporization of pure solvent So here we have uh, uh, two points uh, on the sublimation curve that is uh, A, B. So there are two points known as uh, F and B are showing the freezing point of the pure solvent and the freezing point of the solution are on the same sublimation curve. So we can write another uh, clausius clapeyron equation. That's, uh, this one is equation number one. So for the sublimation curve, we have uh, another equation. So we have equation one, uh, which is applying to the only liquid states that is uh, uh, from uh, for P naught and uh, 
two uh, temperatures uh, that are for the freezing point of the solution and the pure solvent uh, all temperatures and pressures are uh, for liquid system so uh, in this equation the heat of vaporization is uh, used for the uh, equation number two uh, this equation is written for the curve uh, sublimation curve that is uh, joining the point f and b for this case we have two pressures that is uh, the pressure p uh, uh, for the vapor pressure of the solid solvent and solution at uh, tfs and the ps that is the vapor pressure of the pure liquid and the solid solvent at uh, freezing point of the pure solvent in equation 2 as uh, uh, the sublimation curve is uh, considered then the heat of uh, the system is del h s uh, that is the heat of sublimation of solid solvent uh, you just have to uh, memorize uh, at this state the equation 1 and 2 for the these two type of uh, heat convergence uh, between two uh, points so here uh, you have to memorize one more thing that is the according to the thermodynamics the heat of sublimation that is subtracted from the heat of vaporization is actually equal to the heat of formation so here we have equation 1 and 2 uh, which are uh, expressed in terms of uh, heat of uh, sublimation and heat of vaporization so we can subtract the equation uh, number 2 from equation number 1 uh, so we can get the heat of formation term so here I have uh, subtracted the equation 2 from equation 1 so uh, here uh, the this difference will equal to the heat of formation and here by taking the log natural for uh, common uh, in the term uh, we have uh, this term over this term when the log natural is uh, taken as common so we have by uh, changing the position of the p and p naught uh, we need to multiply with a minus sign here here we get equation number three so equation three uh, relates the vapor pressure of the solid solvent to the vapor uh, pressure of the pure liquid solvent at uh, temperature tf naught that is the relation of p naught and tf naught whereas it also uh, relating the vapor pressure of the solution to that of the pure liquid uh, solvent at temperature tf naught now let's uh, apply the Raoult's law on this equation number 3 and convert the vapor pressure of the system to the mole fraction of the components. So according to the definition of the Raoult's law, the vapor pressure of the solution over vapor pressure of the pure solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the pure solvent that is the first definition of the Raoult's law again we know that uh, the uh, mole fraction uh, of the solution is equal to 1 and uh, the mole fraction of the solvent is equal to 1 minus x2 so here the uh, first definition of Raoult's law is converted to P over P naught uh, is equal to 1 minus x2 so uh, in simple words we can say that P is the uh, vapor pressure of the 
a solution at uh, freezing point that is uh, in uh, equilibrium between the uh, solid solvent and the solution whereas p naught is the uh, vapor pressure of the uh, pure liquid uh, that at its freezing point that point is actually in equilibrium between the uh, pure super cool liquid and the pure solvent at liquid state so now we have p over p naught is equal to 1 minus x2 so we can put this value here in equation 3 so we get equation 4 that is the log natural of 1 minus x2 is equal to the uh, negative factor of heat of formation over the general gas constant into the factor showing the relationship between the temperature and the mole fraction of the solute so here we have uh, a mathematical ex uh, explanation that while opening the uh, series uh, that is 1 minus x2 so we have uh, this uh, series that is uh, minus x2 plus uh, x2 square over 2 factorial and uh, x3 uh, x2 cube over 3 factorial plus x4 uh, sorry x2 over 4 Victoria so on so here we have uh, assumed that the solution is very dilute and the square uh, quadratic and the higher order power series of this equation uh, will give the value that have minor contribution So these values can be ignored and uh, we can uh, write that uh, this series is opting to a value that is minus x2. As the, uh, these uh, values or the terms will give the contribution that is uh, uh, minor and can be considered as negligible contribution to the value of x2 so since the solution is dilute and uh, the value of x2 is very small for example if it's uh, point, uh, uh, zero 0.01 then the uh, this factor will be equal to point double zero 0.001 and uh, these factors will have uh, much lower values so here the, the almost equal to so here uh, this factor adding to this one is uh, contributing uh, in uh, negligible contribution so as this equation is written as equation number four so we can rewrite this equation as minus x2 is equal to minus heat of formation over r into the temperature term here we know that the T F node minus T freezing point of the solution is actually the depression in freezing point so here uh, again we are going to uh, uh, consider an approximation that have been uh, discussed for the elevation in boiling point in the previous lecture that if we are taking the solution very dilute the difference between these uh, two temperature will be very small and the uh, this uh, temperature it will be almost equal to the or near to the freezing point of the pure 
solvent so since the uh, solution is very dilute the factor that is tf naught into tfs is equal to the so we can say that this one is equivalent to the uh, freezing point of the pure solvent so we can write as this factor is equal to tf naught square as we are making it equal to or almost equal to tf naught for a very dilute solution for this uh, condition uh, this equation is again written as x2 is equal to the heat of formation over journal gas constant into depression in freezing point over the freezing point of the pure solvent that is in equilibrium between the super cold liquid and the normal liquid of the pure solvent so here uh, we can rearrange the equation in terms of the calculation of the depression in freezing point that is equal to the again r tf naught square over heat of formation these are all constant parameters and into a variable parameter that is the mole fraction of the solute so here we have equation number five as uh, we have discussed earlier that the uh, x2 is equal to the mole fraction of the uh, solute that is equal to the number of moles of the uh, solute over the total number of moles of the solution that is the number of moles of the solvent and the number of moles of the uh, solute here uh, the concentration is very small as uh, we can suppose that the n1 is if it is 0.99 and n2 is almost equal to 0 0.01 so if we add n1 plus n2 that is uh, is showing the uh, minimum contribution to the uh, the factor so we can write that uh, x2 is equal to actually n2 over n1 so for a special case uh, when the solution is taken in such a way that weight of the weight of the solvent is thousand grams then n2 becomes the molality so we can write that x2 is equal to the m over n1 this uh, case is applicable only when the weight of the solvent is taken as 1000 grams so we can rewrite the equation number five as the depression in freezing point is equal to the rtf naught square over del hf and uh, as we have uh, taken the weight of the solvent in uh, 1000 grams so we are going to fix the value of n1 so we have only variable parameter that is m so all these uh, all the factors within the bracket of this equation that is equation number six are constants uh, and they depend upon the nature of the solvent because uh, here we have heat of formation of the solvent R is the journal gas constant, Tf naught square is the freezing point of the pure solvent. 
So all these factors within the brackets of uh, this equation are constants and they depend on the nature of the solvent. So let's uh, put the collection of the constant as uh, uh, one constant that is the Kf. It is the freezing point constant or the uh, it is also known as cryoscopic constant. So uh, this constant is Kf is actually the terms uh, within the bracket that is RTF not scalar over del HF into N1. So we can write the equation uh, 6 as uh, del Tf. Here we have equation 7. So we can rewrite the equation 6 in terms of the cryoscopic or the freezing point constant that is Tf is equal to the cryoscopic constant into molality of the solution. So here M is actually the and this equation is equation number 8 and uh, this one is the molality of solution. So here this equation number 8 is useful in a sense that we come to know that uh, uh, depression of freezing point that is del Tf is only depends on the molality of uh, solution so the Tf is uh, the colligative property that is the colligative property it means that it depends on the concentration of the uh, solute or uh, or uh, we can say that it is depending on the number of particles of the solute in previous lecture we have uh, derived that the molality of the solute is actually the uh, equal to the thousand into weight of the uh, solute over weight of the solvent into molar mass of the solute so we can rewrite the uh, equation number 8 as the depression in freezing point is equal to the uh, freezing point constant into 1000 W2 over W1 and M2 so here uh, W2 and uh, W1 is the weight of the uh, solute and the solvent and the M2 is the molar mass of the solute. So from uh, this equation we can calculate the molar mass of the solute by rearranging this equation as M2 is equal to Kf over uh, depression in freezing point into 1000 W2 over W1. So here uh, if we know the uh, Kf value of the solvent uh, which are uh, usually given in literature for uh, various kind of solvents and uh, Tf uh, is the depression in freezing point that is also available in literature for some uh, solutions but uh, it can be calculated experimentally uh, by taking the Difference of the freezing point of the pure solvent and the solution uh, that uh, can be measured experimentally using the apparatus uh, uh, that is known as freezing point uh, apparatus uh, also usually uh, the Beckman apparatus is used. So here uh, M2 is the uh, molar mass of the non volatile non volatile non electro light solute so uh, in the, the today's lecture we have uh, following conclusions 
so the first one is the depression of freezing point that is uh, del t f uh, is directly proportional to the uh, molality of uh, uh, solution and does not depend on the nature of the solute so it is uh, it is not depending on the nature of solute if the solute is non volatile and non electrolyte second conclusion is that the value of kf is independent of the concentration of is uh, independent of the concentration of concentration and nature of solute and the third point is the experimental and theoretical values of kf must agree why because here uh, the kf is independent of the solute 